It is hard to describe what life was like for young Jeff Matavik, diagnosed with Tourette syndrome when he was six years old. There are only still pictures of the boy, who was always in motion, plagued by uncontrollable urges that led to muscle tics and got worse as he got older. Video shot by Jeff's doctor just last month capture the turmoil inside his body, wildly jerking muscles that would not be controlled with medication. Can you do this with your right hand? Now your left hand. I get a full body tenseness, my arm, my leg, my eyes. It could be any combination of things for any duration of time under an unbelievable amount of physical pressure. How Jeff went from this, overwhelmed by the sudden involuntary motor tics that characterize Tourette syndrome, to this, a man in control, calm, relaxed, is truly a story of courage and perseverance. He searched for answers and found a medical team at University Hospitals of Cleveland, willing to try something unconventional. The implantation of electrodes in his brain that, when stimulated, could interrupt the signals Jeff's brain was sending to his muscles. The technique, called deep brain stimulation, or DBS, has previously demonstrated success in controlling tremors in patients with Parkinson's disease and dystonia, but had never been applied to a Tourette's syndrome patient in America. Deep within the brain are a collection of cells, and those cells, called the basal ganglia, uh, work as an orchestra to synchronize and smooth out movements that we produce. At times, with certain diseases, those movements become disjointed. The orchestra gets out of tune and out of tempo. And with that, you develop a disorder of motion. And that can take many different manifestations. It can be a slowness of movement, can be a jerkiness of movement, can be a sustained driving movement in one way or another, or in Jeff's case, it could be a sudden twitching movement that could be very complex and uh, very, very forceful. Go ahead. Now I'm going to just look at this in a couple of different views. Before surgery, physicians carefully mapped Jeff's brain using MRI scans, 3D computer imaging, and mathematical computations to map the safest and most direct route to the brain cells that must be stimulated. Yeah. We're going to go just posterior to that lateral. That'll be electrode zero. Neurosurgeon Robert Masunas placed electrodes in both sides of Jeff's brain, running wires under the skin behind his ears, down his neck, to attach the electrodes to the pacemaker-like devices implanted just below Jeff's shoulders. After he recovered from this outpatient surgery, the devices were turned on, sending electrical impulses to the brain cells. The results were immediate an amazing response for Jeff and his doctors. I do, I do feel a relaxation in the left side. A complete resolution to his movement disorder. Jeff's neurologist, Dr. Brian Maddox. We had every reason to believe that this would be a delayed response and really no reason to believe that this would be an immediate response, like tremor is an immediate response. And so the fact that we got a result was, was gratifying enough. The fact that we got it within minutes of, of turning the thing on, um, and within a couple of hours of all the fine-tuning and tweaking, we had someone sitting in front of us who wasn't ticking, uh, was just amazing. It's really hard to communicate how amazing that was. The Jeff that I knew a month ago was a very emotion-filled person, obviously. Um, little dreams, little aspiration, little hope, if any. Disbelief. This isn't going to work. Um, it's a long shot. The Jeff I know today and feel today is completely rejuvenated. Uh, still getting used to my environment, but it's a thrill every day. It's a thrill to wake up and I've had the best night's sleep I've had in years, every single night, because I'm not ticking in my sleep. Um, it's, it's amazing to get going, to be productive, to be able to write, um, to be able to go to the counter uh, and get a glass out instead of a, a sipper cup, 
to be able to feed myself using a fork instead of a spoon so I don't jab myself or talk on the phone and not have to pull away and hit myself in the face, to go to the store, to drive, everything. This is a whole new world that I'm not used to, so in a way it's, uh, I'm an infant still. Um, so I'm just getting started. Uh, my dreams are, are big, uh, they're attainable, but they're lofty. And uh, I'm just, I, I don't have enough hours in one day to, to do all the things that I want to do.